looking like a cyclonic rift bit you. <laughs> Screaming out, return your permanence. You know, so <laughs> one of those lines. Counterflux, Farsi. They Keep better not quit this job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so bringing you up to date on the board here, it looks like Corey has a volcanic strength on a Stromkirk Noble, so 5-5 five, five Noble with Mountain Walk and a 2-2 two, two Cackler. He is playing against four lands and a Snapcaster. Sure. So once again, we see volcanic strength coming into play. So Greg's up a game, but this game looks really bad for Greg. Yeah, Volcanic Strength on Stromkirk Noble. Unblockable, unkillable with any red spell. He's going to need something like a Tameo, a Cyclonic Rift. You could take uh, your permanence back with you. That was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm like a Cyclonic Rift hits you. All right, there's a Thrag Tusk from Greg. Gaining five life in the process. But, I mean, what is he to do about the Volcanic Strength? Seriously. Um, I would think that... Greg's plan right now is to put all of his permanents on top of his deck and put his deck back in his box. I don't know. That's I, <laughs> I, I wouldn't count Greg out yet. No? How, how do you beat that card? I mean, he does have three lands and I think a Searing Spear in his hand, so his hand's not really helping him. So I, I think maybe your play is good. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Zach Zach my line's call, right again. Yeah, Zach <laughs> Hall's line is correct again. So at least we have a game of three. On the left, we have Corey with his black-red aggro deck. I, I think it's more of a red-black aggro. Red-black aggro, yeah. yeah. That's what I would say, versus Greg, who's playing Rug Control. So how are they sideboarding for this matchup? What do you think? Well, that, that game really sets the stage for game three, I think, because prior to this game, Greg didn't know that Corey had Volcanic Strength. He, he probably guessed, but he didn't know. Sure. Uh, and he has to bring in any kind of bounce he might have, any just anything to deal with that. Uh, he negate? Have, he he might have to bring in Negate or Dungeon Geist. Yeah, I mean, Negate's not terrible. Negate can, you know, stop a Searing Spear, stop a Killer of Flames, stop a Brimstone Volley. Just just any direct damage type card. Right. I think Greg is going to bring in his, his Static Casters. Definitely really good against the, the weenie guys that Corey will have. And he's also going to bring in his two Dungeon Geist. Try to lock down a creature with a Volcanic Strike on it. Yeah, you know, when we first came to this match, I thought that... Uh, Greg had no chance because of the board state, but now that I look at the list a little closer, I like Greg's chances. Is it Staticaster? It's great against Corey. It just blanks Falcon Wrath Aristocrat, it kills Lightning Mauler, it kills Stone Right, it kills Unpumped Nobles, and it's also just a three toughness blocker for Ash Zealot, Lightning Mauler, Cackler, all these guys. Definitely. It's only bad against Boros Reckoner and Hellrider. Yeah, and I mean, Greg just has a lot of cheap removal, like you were saying. You know, Searing Spirit is a Charm Pillar Flame. All of it is, is really cheap, interacts well, and it's just awesome with Snapcaster Mage. I'm kind of disappointed that Greg only has two Snapcaster Mage in his deck. I would kind of like to see a third or even a fourth, especially with all these awesome spells that he could be playing. Yeah, I would think I think it'd be better than Mercurial Chemistry, but... Well, I mean, I think the Chemistry just plays a different role, but I could see it be be being better than, you know, a Think Twice, for example. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I, I've been equally unimpressed with Think Twice this week. Sure. It's just, this format is so fast that the extra cards from Think Twice rarely matter. Exactly, and you know, you think about it, hey, I could play Think Twice, or I could play a card like Rule Charm, I could play Izzet Charm, I could play Simic Charm, you know, I could just play another two mana instant that gives me more options rather than just cycling. Yeah, these games haven't really come down to who has extra cards usually. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, with Think Twice, he doesn't really have any way to abuse it. He doesn't have Thought Scours, he doesn't have anything to really put it in his graveyard. He doesn't have a, a Liliana where he wants to discard a thing twice and then flash it back. Right. It's just a plain old value card. It's a Council of the Sorotami that costs five mana. Yeah, it's just, I mean, sure, he could split it up over two turns. He could do maybe a neat trick with the Huntmaster of the fellas. But other than that, I think I would rather have Simic Charm. I, I really don't know why people are not playing Simic Charm yet. I think on the Pro Tour, it's just going to be a really big hit. It's just a, a really versatile card, and it, it just allows you to to, to, get, to get more play with your deck. Again, Zip, Simic Charm, Zach, tell everybody what it does exactly. Well, it's of course the blue and the green, instant, two mana. You get target creature plus three, plus three, so it giant growths, yep. or permanents you control gain hexproof until end of turn, or return target creature to its owner's hand. So it's unsummon, giant growth, and ranger's guile all in one card. Yeah, but it's a ranger guile for any of the permanents. All, yeah, right, permanent, not just yeah. creature. It's not just creature, so you know, if you have a, a Tamiyo like, like Greg has, they're trying to Oblivion Ring Tameo, you can just stop it and they'll have to Oblivion Ring their own permanent, for right. example, or target their own permanent exactly. with the Detention Sphere. Acidic Slime, Detention yeah. Sphere, exactly. any of these yeah. cards. They could choose not to Detention Sphere because you have the option. Do you want to remove it? Do you not want to remove it, but still. Oh, people might not know that, too, though. Sure, yeah. 
So Greg gonna be on the play for game three. And he's going back to the well. All right, so Greg's gonna mulligan, he takes a peek, wonders if it's the, was the right decision or not. Do you, when you mulligan, do you ever take a peek or no? Uh, once in a while, but when I do, I, I don't I don't get upset when there are lands on top. Sure. No, it's, it's, it's hard to do that. Yeah, if you're gonna play a 10 round tournament, you're gonna really wanna keep your composure. You don't want one match to upset you, one game to upset you, one decision to upset you. Because if you do, it's gonna just kind of be a downward spiral. Yeah, when I realized that uh, that, that was a bad idea it was, I mulliganed game one top eight of a PTQ, the second PTQ I ever top eighted. I looked and you know, it was like the nut draw. Sure. I, I just, I tilted off, I punted the match and then, af and then after the match I thought back, I was like, well, what if I didn't look? Yeah. <laughs> maybe I wouldn't, maybe I would've won that yeah. match. But I mean, the more you play Magic, the more you learn and yeah, of course. The more you live life, the more experiences you gain most of the time, so. So here we go, Greg Komar, six cards. I see a lot of red spells. I don't see many lands. I don't see any lands. All right, so Greg is going out to five. He looks again. <laughs> Just as we said, oh, there were lands, lands on top. I should have kept. <laughs> yeah, so cards that I have not seen today that I thought I would, definitely Simic Charm. Any card on, on your radar that you uh, thought you would have seen? I don't know. I thought we might see more... Um, more of the four mana blue black uh, dark confidant. I don't sure. remember the name of it, but the the, uh, the seer, the, the seer, yeah. yeah, the uh, dust mantle seer, dust mantle, yeah, seer. dust mantle seer. That yeah. card, I thought immediately of Moroi when I first saw it. If you don't yes. know Moroi, is the blue black two four four flyer from the original Ravnica. Beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life. So officially costed four four flyer. Um, this ability a little bit. Though. Yeah, I was also surprised not to see an aggro Grixis deck. You have Snapcaster Mage, you have Augur Bolas, you have Dust Mantle Seer. Yeah, see, the Mirror Charm. The Mirror Charm with Dust Mantle Seer. Mirror maybe. Charm is very good. Yeah, the Mirror Charm is very good. Searing Spear you can play, is a Charms. So I think there's definitely a really good Grixis shell. Aggro Grixis you want to be working on. That sounds like a really hard deck to get the numbers right to figure out what you want to play for Augur Bolas and for the Charm. Sure. And that, that's a tough one. I bet you people are working on that for the Pro Tour. I believe it. All right, so Corey leaves off with a Rakdos Cackler making it in the 2-2. Greg has the Pillar of Flame. Let's see if he decides to use it on it. And there's a Farseek. So you, Greg thinks, hey, I want to rip my mana. You know, maybe he wants to draw into a Huntmaster. Maybe he has a Huntmaster. But mulliganing down to five is, is pretty tough. ABR, always be rampant. Always be rampant. Always. So Greg, though, even though he's on five cards, he has a pretty solid draw here. All he needs uh, is to draw a solid succession of lands and spells. And, He's, uh, he's not out of it. His yeah. hand is pretty good. He didn't get mana screwed. Sure. He has well, a shot. Corey's hand looks really good. He's got some lands. He's got some spells. That's usually all the red deck needs. Yeah. All right. And he passes the turn. No, no two drop, though. Hmm. He does have a Boros Reckoner ready for turn three. Yeah, he does. So Greg has access to three mana right here. There's a Pillar of Flame targeting the Reckless Cackler. Pillar of Flame will remove from the game. Don't really think it's relevant. Nope, not on the mono red deck. Yeah, Greg does not have a fourth lane, however, so he's going to have to pass the turn. And he's going to be facing down a, a Boros Reckoner, it looks like. That's exactly what it is. And that's a pretty tough card for a rug deck to deal with. Definitely, yeah. He's going to have to really rely on Tamiyo or Dungeon Guy. Something to, to tap it down. I mean, sure, he could, you know, Searing Spirit. Yeah, he can Searing Spirit. But it's not the best answer. Yeah, yeah. Not ideal. Just lightning bolt him yourself, essentially. Yeah. Greg Komar has a Thrag Tusk in hand, he has a Static Caster, but right now he's being beat down by this 3-3. Sure. Corey just passes the turn, and at the end of the turn, Greg's going to drop it as a Static Caster. And draws a land, so he's right. one closer to Thrag Tusk. Yeah, he does draw his fourth land. Does Greg have any other play here? I don't know, I can't tell what that last card in his well, hand is. We know he has that Pillar of Flame earlier. And okay, he's just gonna go for it. He's gonna pillar it, and then he's gonna shoot it with it as a static caster. Now, where did Corey redirect the damage to? I think he dealt it all to Greg's face. Really? Do you think there's any argument to kill that as a static caster? Yeah, I probably would have killed the static caster by by Corey's hand motions. I didn't think. I don't know if he realized what was gonna happen. I don't know. He he's, he just kind of like shrugged and pointed at the dome. Sure, so. sure, yeah. He might just have a ton of burn in the hand too. Yeah, I don't mind. Oh, there's a brimstone volume. That makes it more, you know, reasonable why he went for the head. It does. Now, Brimstone Light only does three damage because uh, the Reckoner was RFG. Was exactly. Exiled. Yeah. yeah. So, a creature did not go to the graveyard this turn. 
But uh, yeah, again, that's kind of contradicting because if the isostatic caster did die, it would deal five. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, so. mistake by Corey, I think he only gave up one damage by. Yeah. Or he he would have yeah. only given I, up. One I, I believe Greg is at nine, correct? I don't know. We'll double check on the. We'll life double check. On the life I think it's nine. Oh, we're checking now. Okay. We think it's nine. Judges are checking for us, so. We're just getting word, so we're gonna pause the game for just one second. Greg does have a dungeon guys in hand. And a threat as I just said before. Can you can you make out what that red card in the middle is? Um it it's like a gold. Huh. I don't recognize that picture. What is that? Uh, it's probably Is it the chemister no? No, it's not chemister. Yeah, it's definitely not chemister. Oh, that's a clan defiance. Oh, okay, the clan defiance. It's like the branching bolt guard. Yep. So if you're familiar with Clan Defiance, we'll get that on the screen for you as soon as possible. Yeah. It's it's the one green, one red X spell. Right. It's sorcery is close to a bonfire, would you say? How how would you really compare it? Um, I think that card is not that good. Not that good, okay. Not that good. Um, it costs five mana to do what branching bolt did. I don't know. It's it's probably better than I think it is, but I, I it's a one off maps in any deck. It yeah. can't be more than one. Yeah. I've seen that the pre-release, a couple of uh, my opponents actually had it, so it was very good and limited, we'll say. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Any kind of fireball effect, any card with X in it is good and limited. Yeah, pretty much. what it is. Okay, so a judge is asking another judge, just to confirm everything, make sure everything's fine. So once again, we have Greg, is a static caster, four lands, holding a dungeon geist, and a thrag tusk. As well as this clan defiance that we have on screen. Yeah, and I think last turn... Killing the is a static caster, especially with Brimstone Volley, would have been better. It, it's tough though, right? Because Corey got to deal six damage. He had a Brimstone Volley, and he got to deal three damage wherever he wanted. Right. So what's better, six damage or five damage and killing the is a static caster? Right. I think it's five damage and the is a static caster. Well, if the burn in your hand adds up to Greg's life total, it's Greg's life. You know, it's six damage. But sure. In most games, I think it's going to be kill static caster. Yeah. Because now the static caster could get in the way of the reckless cacular. It could, right, um, exactly. Maybe a haste creature. Yeah, exactly. Maybe halting Corey from playing a one toughness guy. Exactly. See, if Corey killed that, he could say go lightning mauler, Boros reckoner, take five. Yeah, exactly. Maybe a little misplay by Corey. Maybe not though, depending on what's in his hand. We'll yeah. Find out soon. I think Corey probably thought the personal volley would deal five. Yeah. It's definitely good that you pointed out with the pillar of flame. So I, I'm really interested to. See what conversation they're having here. It doesn't seem like there's much to talk about. Yeah, exactly. It seems kind of cut and dry. Yeah. Seems pretty straightforward. But they're still having a, a slight debate here. So once again, if you're just joining us, I'm Gerard Fabiano here with Zach Hall. Hey, guys. This is round six already. Yeah. The day's going by pretty quick. Really, really good day so far. Uh, all, almost all of our matches have either gone to time or have taken up a bunch of the time off the clock. A lot of good matches in stand. Yeah, yeah. And we had a really good... Pretty good matches all around. It's either you know pretty cool decks we had, or really solid players. Exactly, and you know I was I was just talking with our director about this during our last break. This standard format seems so much better than the last standard format. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So much more interactive. So many so many more things you can do with all ten boots. Yeah, exactly. I know I know a lot of people kind of didn't really like the last standard format. They're just like, yeah, I'm not gonna go to the Grand Prix. I don't really like standard or. I don't know about this tournament, but now people are definitely more excited, especially with the Pro Tour coming up. Everyone's really looking forward to seeing what the pros are going to bring to the table. It probably will influence SCG Opens for the next couple of weeks. And then the SCG Open Invitational, well, the SCG Invitational in Atlanta will, will affect more things. So it's, it's just a pretty big cycle, you know? Each week definitely defines the metagame for next week. It's pretty interesting how it works. It's like a Pro Tour and an SCG Invitational. They really define standard. Yeah. They set the stage for all events following them. But then the opens, they're not meaningless, not even close. Oh, sure. I mean, they more they're the to foundation. Tweak the decks. Yeah, tweak the decks, or they're the, the foundations, especially when a new format's coming out. Right. You know, Gate Crash just got released last week. Everybody's all hyped on that, and I don't blame them. So, Greg definitely has a cool deck. So, there, it looks like there's an appeal with the head judge. So, it looks like it'll come back to us. We're not too sure. We'll, uh, we'll take a look in a second. But once again, we'll, we'll talk about Greg's Rug Control deck, because Rug Control has been a deck that I've always been interested in for a while. Greg 
features four Thrag Tusk, four Huntmaster FLS. Huntmaster FLS is probably best in a rug control deck or a rug mid-range. I'm not even sure if I would call this a rug control deck. It could be kind of like a rug aggro tempo mid-range deck. Also, he has Augur Bolas. He has three copies of those. He only has two Snapcaster Major, which I can't really agree with. Rug has some of the best cards you can play. Yeah. Flashing back a Forest Seek is fine. Flashing back any Burn Spell is fine. Is a charm or whatnot. So that's Greg's list, and we're going to go deeper look into it. Maybe we'll get a, in a, um, a deck deck. But back to the match at hand. There's a Dungeon Geist. Probably targeted at the Rakdos Cackler. Ty tried the... Well, we don't have time. We have Corey. All right, so we're... Oh, wow. Skull crack, skull, skull crack. crack, skull crack. All right, so after all that, we're like, he's doing this, he's doing this. And <laughs> skull crack, skull crack. You lose, I win. So Corey moves on. He wins.